On the other hand, Marx will sometimes speak about communist emancipation in other terms, where here in one's activity, which one engages in as a particular individual, one will be doing something that is immediately social in character, is immediately in some respect universal in character, is in some respect doing something that involves one's relation to everyone, and where everyone is involved in engaging in this activity on a par with others, as opposed to being under the domination of any external power. So if you think about it, it appears to be presented as if there is this collective exercise, collective determination of all activities. And here the activities in question are thought of as the activities that are involved in producing what it is one would want to enjoy. Of course, if this is all collectively determined, the enjoyment is just as immediately collectively uh, established and decided, as is the engagement in productions. Now note, Marx does not provide us with any articulated development of how this is to function. There's no talk of any intermediary institutions or bodies. There's just this immediate, immediate unification of what individuals do with, you could say, the will of all. Except here applied to what might be considered to be the activities of economic life. To some degree, this kind of immediate connection between what the individual is doing and what is collectively determined reflects a certain view of a direct connection between the individual and the universality, the individuality and universality willing. You find in certain notions of participatory democracy that are put forward by Rousseau that to some degree could be said to be exemplified at certain stages in the French Revolution, where the idea is that you can't have any kind of intermediary or institutions that stand between your will and the will of public institutions between you and the state. You have that, if, for example, you have representative democracy. Whereas Rousseau would say, the moment you decide upon a representative, you no longer have any role in determining the course of state action. The state now lies in the hands of those who you've elected. And the only act that you engage in that has anything to do with your own individual will is well, the willing uh, to select delegates. So there can't be any delegation of political power in this sense. Or it can't be representation, I should say. If one is going to uphold the identification, the direct identification between the individual will of the citizen and the, the universal will of the state. And allegedly, unless there is a direct connection, you don't have freedom. The will of the state is not your will. It's not an expression of your will. And so likewise, Rousseau recognizes in taking this idea uh, seriously that in a way you can't have political plurality. Why can't you have any political plurality if we're going to retain this identity between the will of the citizen and the will of the state? Which Rousseau and others who have this notion that freedom requires this immediate connection of the individual will and anything that could be considered a universal will. Why can't you have political diversity? Where, for example, in a participatory assembly, some of us support something, and some support something else. What happens then with regard to what is adopted, vis-a-vis -vis its relation to the will of the citizenry? Well, it would seem to only reflect the will of those who favored it. And what is done would not be something that in any way embodies the will of those who opposed it. So the only way you can sustain this direct identity between individual will and the institutional will of the state, the universal will of the state, is if citizens are clones, if there is no diversity, if in effect one destroys any kind of plurality. Now the same thing could be said if we apply the kind of direct identity that Marx seems to be suggesting. I think I he provides us with no intermediary machinery or, or bodies to connect up both the productive activities and enjoyment, as he puts it, of the individual with what could set, be said to be humanity in its totality, and its species being in its universality. Right? The notion is it's a collective determination which all participate. But exactly how can that unity be maintained? 
unless one eliminates all intermediaries, eliminates any kind of diversity. And if not, then how are we to think of this working itself out? Well, to some degree, there's, there, there, there seems to be a suspicion of any determinate organization, in that the moment you have determinate organizations, people have roles, such as being the office holder of that institution, that others do not have. And at the moment that differentiation takes place, a division of labor of sorts, one loses that kind of direct identification of the individual and uh, the universal 